We are recording everything now, so we are all set to go. Yes, yes. So everybody, everybody, please mute yourself so that you can hear Dr. Saka clearly and you can hear his introduction also. So uh, you can mute yourself. Your video can be on, but you can mute yourself. Or oh, Dr. Sarkar, you can mute everybody. Let them, let them mute themselves, okay? So, okay? You can go ahead and start, I think. It's about time. Yeah, it's about time. Yeah, that's true. Manojish, is it okay to start? Are you waiting for some more participants to join in? Are you, you are on mute. Yeah, they started joining. Few are here, but uh, wait, we, can I think we can start while the time they will join. Yeah, we can start. I think can start now. Okay. Okay. Let's so, start. so I I can I can lead them initially. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, welcome everybody. Uh, this is our Vyasa Yoga event on uh, yoga therapy for diabetes, and our eminent guest is from USA, Dr. Dilip Sarkar. And um, Dr. Dilip Sarkar is an MD, he's an FSCS, he's a CIAYT, D lit in yoga and chairman of the Center of Integrative Medicine and Yoga, Taksha Institute, Hampton, Virginia. He's a retired vascular surgeon turned yoga acharya, a certified yoga therapist, certified Ayurvedic yoga therapist and an Ayurvedic practitioner as well. He retired as an associate professor of surgery at Eastern Virginia Medical School, Norfolk, Virginia, and now teaches yoga therapy, Ayurvedic philosophy, and Ayurvedic yoga therapy, both nationally and internationally, to healthcare providers with a focus on integrating yogic and Ayurvedic wisdom with the science of Western medicine. Dr. Sarkar started the first category one ECME approved CME, that is the continuing medical education course in the USA for physicians, that means doctors, yoga therapy for medical professionals in 2010. He serves on, on several local and national healthcare boards as past president of the board of directors for the American Heart Association, Hampton Roads chapter, Virginia, Immediate part past president of the board of directors, International Association of Yoga Therapists, that is IAYT in short, is the chairman of the board, Life in Yoga Institute, Life member, National Ayurvedic Medical Association, that is NAMA, is a fellow American College of Surgeons and fellow American Associations of Integrative Medicine. On January 12, 2019, during annual convocation, he was awarded Doctor of Letters, d degree in yoga by the best universe, yoga university of the world, that is S. Vyasa, Swami Vivekananda Yoga Anusandhan Sansthan of Bengaluru in India. And uh, S. Vyasa Singapore is a branch of that uh, great university of yoga. Dr. Sarkar's new DVD, Yoga Therapy for Health and Healing, a daily practice, and his book, Yoga Therapy, Ayurveda, and Western Medicine, a Healthy Convergence, published in April of 2017, has been well received by the yoga therapy, Ayurveda, and Western healthcare community. The book will be translated in Bengali as well and will be published in India by Ananda Publishers of Calcutta. And also Dr. Sarkar was our guest in 2018 and we held several workshops with him at Vyasa Yoga and a lot of you were, had, have benefited from his wisdom. And it's an absolute honor that he is amongst us even today. I'm so delighted to see him again. And this COVID has actually really brought this yoga community together and made the whole world smaller. So we will start with three, three rounds of OM first. Then I will hand over to Dr. Sarkar to enlighten all of us. So everybody just close your eyes and bring your hands in front of your chest in the prayer position. Take a deep breath in. And gently breathe out. Take another deep breath in. Let's all chant together. Oh. 
Press your palms on your eyes and slowly open your eyes. Welcome you all and over to you, Dr. Sakar. You can now mute everybody. We are ready to listen to you. All right. Okay, let me go ahead on my, my side if I can put myself on a spotlight so I can see what I'm doing. Okay, you'll be seeing, you'll be seeing uh, the way you want to see. Okay, uh, <clears throat> good evening uh, in Singapore and good morning in America. As uh, he said, uh, you think that uh, this is the positive side of uh, COVID-19. You're all connected. I was the Manoj, we are all, I was all looking at all the pictures I took in Singapore with all of you. Wow, it was a really memory of life. Today, we'll be talking about the integrative approach uh, the therapy for diabetes. Now, people who are listening, please, please mute your microphone. Uh, please mute. I'm not going to do it because I want you to talk also. I want you to participate. So the integrative approach means that the Abhaji talked about my DVD, my book, even in my book, if you see, I just want to show you my book. If you see that my book is called Yoga Therapy, Ayurveda and Western Medicine, A Healthy Convergence. What does it mean? It means the wisdom of yoga therapy with the science of modern medicine. And if you look at clear closely, the picture of Albert Einstein and Rabindranath Tagore. We said when a scientist meets a philosopher, that's your 21st century medicine. And what, what we have done, let me explain to you first few minutes before I show you the practices. Because for me, 99% is practice and 1% is a theory. The first, many of you who joined here, you are a you know, healthcare provider, physicians, uh, you know, the uh, seasoned uh, yoga therapy teachers, yoga teachers, participants. So I'd like to give you a little bit of concept, the concept of yoga therapy, how to take care of diabetes. Now, if you look at the whole, uh, whole YouTube, YouTube is full of the uh, yoga protocol for diabetes. It is great, you know, I mean, I'm not, I'm not saying anything, but if you understand why you are doing it, then you will remember it. And also, you don't have to remember the asanas, pranayamas, mudras, bandhas, kriyas, what it done as a, like we call it a cookbook medicine. Because all of you are very experienced teachers, you have your own tools. So what you can do, once you understand the concept, you'll be able to use the asanas from your own tools, pranayama from your own tools, mudras from your own tools. So let me go ahead and first few minutes, I'll give you the introduction. We will keep about 15 minutes at the end, about for question and answer. And I cannot read all the questions here. If there is, I will let uh, Abhaji or Moj uh, to give me the question. I'll be glad to answer. The first concept 
diabetes in a war diabetes is called diabetes mellitus it's a lifestyle related disorders now what is a lifestyle related disorder it is a product of our modern day lifestyle which is called a stress let me tell you the sequence how the diabetes is formed in the western diabetes ke upar hai yes somebody mute please please mute your microphone i think you mute everybody dr sarkar you mute everybody it's very disturbing it will be easier if i mute everybody yes please yes please where do i go where do i go to mute everybody uh, you go to participants and then you can uh, at the end is uh, mute everybody or, or there is a, a meeting option in that also you can mute everybody in more go to more more okay let me, let me see uh, okay Third more and meeting setting more more and then uh, you have the host options of meeting mute, settings mute participants yeah. upon entry correct entry or it says mute participants on entry or mute all okay got it got it mute all okay yeah, mute. correct i'm muting all correct. you're all muted now okay so i have to unmute you now huh no no but i don't see myself here of course okay here it is okay thank you so it is the product of the stress and the stress is called a sympathetic overdrive from western medical concept and the uh, the product what is called the effect of the final product the hormone of stress is called a cortisol cortisol is formed like a spiral to chemical so now what we know from our western medical practice that if you give a 5 mg of prednisone to a diabetic patient the blood sugar will jump about two times three times if it is 150 mg we use in america 50 mg it will go up to 450 500 so the cortisol raises the blood sugar so what you need to do you need to have in your practice to activate we call it relaxation response and activation of parasympathetic tone what is a parasympathetic tone we have a nerve in our body called a vagus nerve the vagus nerve comes from the brain stem and it comes down in the neck in between we call it a carotid sheath carotid artery and internal jugular vein in the process it gives a branch is called a auricular branch of vagus nerve then it gives a branch to your larynx your pharynx then it supplies your heart your lung that comes in sub supplying whole gastrointestinal system the left side comes in front right one goes to the back for anterior posterior vagus nerve at the gastroesophageal junction and the whole gastrointestinal tract our gm is a parasympathetic nerve so now you have to think about the how what are the practices we activate and i will come back and explain to you next concept is from yoga philosophy our concept is that the body cannot digest sugar i when i'm eating something our body has a, a digestive power is called agni we call a jathar agni and we need to do what is called a agni deepana agni deepana means ignite our jathar agni so body can digest sugar so what will be that like for asanas the primary asanas to activate the jathar agni is your vajrasan and mundukasan and i will i will demonstrate all of them so you will do a vajrasan and you might have seen the our parents you know grandparents after a big meal or a lunch dinner they used to sit down in a vajrasana for a long time vajrasana activates your parasympathetic tone from vajrasana you can go to mandukasana from mandukasana you can go to your shashanka asana 
These are a sequence of events. For pranayama, the powerful pranayama to activate Agni is called Kapal Bhati Pranayama. Kapal Bhati Pranayama is called your Agni Pradhan Pranayama. If you look at the three basic pranayama, the Bastrika Pranayama is called the Prano Pradhan Pranayama. It brings a prana in our body. Kapal Bhati is called Agni Pradhan Pranayama. It brings, uh, ignites our Agni. And Anulom Vilom Pranayama, alternate nostril breathing, is called the Vayu Pradhan Pranayama. So the first concept is activate a relaxation response, activate a parasympathetic tone. Second is activate your Agni, Jathar Agni, to digest your sugar. See, when you have a food, when a food gets properly digested, it gets digested in called Sapta Dhatu. Sapta Dhatu is a Rasha Dhatu, Rakta Dhatu, Mamsa Dhatu, Vedo Dhatu, Vasti Dhatu, Vajra Dhatu, Shukra Dhatu. And then forms, these are the tissues in the body. So the tissue. Third concept is the pancreas is sitting at the, your, we call it a posterior part, at the deeper end of our head. If you look at anatomy, the pancreas is the one which releases insulin. So, that, so the, what you need, if you look at anatomy first, there is a, on the right side of the liver, left side of the spleen, there's a stomach, and behind, and the pancreas is like a, a, lo a long organ, but it is very close to your vertebral body, like your spine. So any spinal twist, you do, the spinal twist will massage your pancreas. So when a spinal twist massage your pancreas, it is going to release more insulin. So now if you see a, a protocol, when you see a protocol for your asana practice, you'll see we're always doing our Vakrasan, uh, Ardhamatsa and Ranasan, we'll be doing the Trikonasan, the standing asanas, we do call your uh, prasharito uttanasan wide angle head down but we'll, well, i'll show it to you all of the asanas and the practice but once you understand the concept that is the most important thing now you can pick and choose from your toolbox what you need to do second concept second concept is that the Diabetes is regarded today as a call genetically predisposed disease. What does it mean? My parents have a diabetes, or my father has a diabetes, or mother has a diabetes. I'm very high prone to develop diabetes. We have shown in studies after studies after studies that a practice of yoga. Remember one thing, yoga practice is not only asana and pranayama or a meditation, a mudras and bandhas and kriyas. Yoga is your philosophy. You know, it's your yoga sutra Patanjali, 196 sutras, of which 193 is manasthir, chitta vritti niro, quieting down your mind. Once you follow the yoga philosophy, you already you are reducing your blood sugar because the mind is spreading down. It's a practice which is eight limb. You know, Patanjali Ashtanga Yoga, eight limbs. So by the time you practice the eight limbs, you know, your blood sugar is going to come down. It is a, it is a life cycle. Your is... This works. All the daily routines. So, coming back, what happens, what you notice in our practice is called primary prevention. If my father, my mother has diabetes, I am not going to have it. Secondary prevention. Can everybody else please mute? Thank you. Okay. The second is called a secondary prevention. Secondary prevention means when I have diabetes, I am on a medication, incorporate 
my happen my blood sugar is going to tertiary prevention is very important and tertiary prevention is diabetes causes a lot of complications for diabetes diabetes uh, was done diabetes diabetes in problem and that also gets connected uh yoga yoga practice okay let's start showing some practices the first if you have to incorporate you incorporate a relaxation response a relaxation response starts with a progressive muscle relaxation what is a progressive muscle relaxation here i am sitting down i'm sitting down in a Sukhasana. I put my feet underneath. I cross my feet. My knee comes down. I'm sitting very comfortably. What happened? My muscle did a contraction. This is called the beginning. In Sanskrit, we call it arumbhu. Arumbhu is the beginning. It allows me to come down in this posture, and by repeated your practice. This is called a neuroplasticity. My brain will allow me. Now, for a person who is just starting a yoga practice, or a suppose who has a patient, we call it a rogi. If you tell them they are going to start a first a, a sun salutation, first kapalbhati pranayama, they are going to go away. So you have to start. Or you can sit in a chair. If you sit in a chair, sit down. Always sit down with the spine straight. Next thing you do, we have called your imbalance in both sides of our brain. I'm right-handed, right-footed. I'm using my left brain. I don't use my right side of the brain, so I need to bring a balance back. So see how simply I'm doing it. Simply, I take my feet, I just cross it in the opposite side, and sit down. And when you do this, you will notice you will have a more comfort in one side, more discomfort in the other side. Why? Because my brain is not in a balance. So what you do, you will practice longer the side you are uncomfortable. Now people will come say, "I cannot sit down like this." You don't have to. What you need to do, you start. Suppose what you are looking for, you are looking for pain. If you get a pain in this posture, you go back. You go back where you have a little bit of discomfort. I said not total comfort. I said comfortable discomfort. Stay here. Stay here, and slowly you will see that muscle cannot contract for too long. Muscle is going to relax. Before it relaxes, it causes a little bit of called a fasciculation. It will be a twitching like this, and slowly the twitching goes away. That state is called sthiti. Sthiti is called a stability. And if you stay in the posture a little longer, the muscle get a profound relaxation. And in in asana state is called a visardhan. Arumbho sthiti visardhan. By the time you come to visardhan, it's a profound relaxation response. It is an activation of your parasympathetic tone. Now, what do you look for? Pain should not have any pain. Second, we'll have your breathing. Very important concept of yoga concept of breathing. What is yoga concept of breathing? We have a five koshas layer: Anomaya kosha, Pranomaya kosha, Manomaya kosha, Viganomaya kosha, Anandamaya kosha. Any imbalance you create in your physical body, it shows up in your breath. That means I will be able to sit down comfortably here, and I will be able to have a completely effortless breathing. If I have any effort in breathing, I'll show it to you. Like when you do a vakrasan, spinal twist, you are twisting a little bit. By the time you come to it, you see your breath catches, but you will back off. You will back off to a asana where you are able to breathe effortlessly. Always remember, people ask me whether should I should I breathe in or breathe out. Do we, yeah, there is some concept. 
The muscle needs oxygen before it contracts, you breathe in. But overall, in a practice for diabetes, in a practice for relaxation response, you always stay in an effortless breathing. Effortless breathing means you are able to talk, you will be able to even sing. And you will see me, I can do a headstand and I'm talking, I'm even singing. I would do a murasan, you know, that the peacock pose, I'm still talking, breathing. That is most important thing. So how to achieve this? With your breath. So what is a breath? That exhalation, lung is like a balloon. It has, it has a 4.5 liter capacity. We only breathe half a liter, 500 cc. So first, you need to learn how to breathe out. So if you take a, say, take a deep breath in, I'm taking a deep breath in. So what happened? That air is sitting in the top of this lung and that air is not being any use. It's called a dead space. So you have to first empty. So you first breathe out. You take a deep breath in completely effortlessly. And you completely breathe out. So what is the concept here? Exhalation is parasympathetic, inhalation is sympathetic. So you do exhalation longer than inhalation. Very simply, you will do count of two in, count of four out. You can very easily can do count of four in, count of eight out. We've been doing it for so long, we can do even a count of 10 in, count of 20 out. So we will practice. So breathing, exhalation, longer than inhalation will bring a relaxation response. Third concept is a Brahmri Pranaya. What is a Brahmri Pranaya? You have your five senses. I hear, I see, I smell, and I touch. The five senses keeps me awake and alert. I close my eyes, I shut down all my senses. In a Brahmri Pranaya, you can use a Shanmukhi Mudra, or you can just put it here. We'll go over with that little, little Brahmri Pranayam. But the most important concept is when you create a vibration, that vibration of a bumblebee, Mama, the same Mama, the same Mama, the same can someone Mama. Please, please mute your microphone and, and the two frequency interacts it causes called harmonic resonance and mind quite starts. So Brahmri is a very powerful tool for diabetic management. That when you rub your hand for coming and cupping, you have a warming in your hands, then you put it over your eyes and let me show you, show it to you how to massage the ear, how to massage the neck, and in the neck is called a carrot sinus. It supplies with a vagus nerve. It creates a profound relaxation. Like when you do a calendar bandha, the chin lock, it activates your carotid sinus. So when it does a carotid sinus, then what it does, it uh, causes a total coming and coming. Now you see, I have changed my speed. I'm in a very extremely relaxed position. Then I go in stage. What is the stage? I go next stage, I take my heel to the back, I take my foot on the top, my knee goes down. See, I'm going to go to a lotus pose, Padmasana, but I'm not going right away. I'm going in stages. How am I going to stages? Now I'm in a Siddhasana, perfect pose, then I use my hand to relax. If you see a baby, it is called a baby fist. So baby, if you look at a baby, baby will close their face, they will take the hand, the baby will put the thumb inside and close. That's the way baby closes the fist. This is called the Adhi Mudra. There are three mudras, which is very important for your lung. This is called a Chin Mudra. This is also called a Gano Mudra. When you put a hand down, a hand down with Chin Mudra. It opens the lower part of the lung. If you close your finger, it's called Chin Mai Mudra. It opens the middle part of your lung. And when you do Adhi Mudra, it causes opening the upper part of the lung. So I always practice with the Adhi Mudra. If you are practicing with me, try. 
put your thumb inside and close. It relaxes your hands. You know, initially your hands are so tight, the finger doesn't go like this. But after Adi Mudra, finger will do like this. See, pain in the hand comes from the tightness. Tightness of your ligaments, tightness of your muscles. Able to do Adi Mudra, relax. Put Adi Mudra, just put it gently over your knees. Close your eyes, breathe out first. Slowly take a deep breath in. Let's do a count of two in, count of four out. Then I will do count of four in, count of eight out. I will progress and you have to do your practice. Remember, yoga practice is not competitive. You do only the amount you can do. So what you will be doing, you will be staying in the place where you are. You can be count of three in, count of six out. I will progress a little bit and show it to you how to do it. If you're practicing with me, keep your spine straight, eyes closed, hand in the Adi Mudra, breathe out first. Slowly, it's a count of two in, count of four out. Mm -hmm. Let's go practice to see, so that we see how progressing you can do. Count of four in, count of eight out. Breathe out first. Count of four in. Very, I've been doing it for a long time, so very comfortable for me. I can go to count of six in, count of 12 out. Let's try count of eight in, count of six. Tina, breathe out first. You can continue. I can go to count of 10 in, count of 20 out. It really quite sucks it. I can Let me show you. Let me show you. I'm going to press now again. Now I put my one foot in the top. It has lotus. Or the Or the spastic Suppose it's hurting me. I'm causing pain. What I do, I back off. I back off when I'm a little comfortable. Even if I pain here, I can back off here. But start somewhere. I'm very relaxed. I can do it. Ardha Padmas. Let's do a couple of Brahmri Pranayam and see Brahmri Pranayam, this will totally quiet down. It's so exactly when a patient comes to you, you need to guide them slowly and slowly. If you tell them you need to sit down and do a spinal twist and Vakrasa, the patient won't get any idea. So in a Brahmri Pranayam, you put your index finger in the forehead, you can use Shanmakhi Mudra, or you can use the three fingers to close your eyes, use your thumb to close your ear and close your mouth. What you'll be doing, you'll be breathing out first, take a deep breath in through your nose and breathe out with the sound of a bumblebee. Let's do it two times, and if you're doing it with me, let's practice all together. So breathe out first. Take a deep breath in.
Slowly take the both the hands, coming and cupping, keep rubbing your hands, keep rubbing your hands. If you're wearing glasses, you remove your glasses, take the hand as a cup, put it over your eyes to take the heat from your cup. Now you see this will be activation of parasympathetic tone. Then slowly bring your hand behind your ear and massage in front of the ear, in the auricle, and also called the, the external canal, the external auricle. In external canal, there is the main branch of the vagus nerve. It's called the auricular branch. Now, you know many a time, if you just a little bit of a massage with your ear canal, you feel a profound level of relaxation. In fact, in Singapore, is in Thailand, they have a massage, a Thai massage, but they call it ear picking to do. This is called activation of your parasympathetic tone. Slowly bring it down, massage your face, and bring your neck and massage in the front of the neck. This is called your carotid sinus. When we have a medical condition called paroxysmal ventricular tachycardia, our heart rate goes by high up. We massage here. It's called bifurcation of the carotid artery. We massage here. It activates your parasympathetic tone. So now what you can see, you have been, you have done a very <clears throat> powerful relaxation. Now I can take my other foot on the top. I'm in my Ardha Padmasan foot. Now like a regular, any yoga practitioner doing it for a longer time, which I do it every single day. I'm going to just put it high up as a Padmasana. It's a beautiful relaxation of my whole body. People say, oh, look at how you done. No, I have done it in stages to bring the relaxation, bring the activation of parasympathetic tone. You may not have to go that far if you don't have to. Next, you need to relax. So very nice way to relax. And your shoulder and your neck. Shoulder relax with the shoulder relaxation. You can put your hand in the shoulder. Dr. Sarkar, sorry to disturb you, but uh, we need to mute some people because others are not able to listen to you. Uh, either you assign me co-host so I can mute other people, so it will not disturb you. You can just go over my name. Press it long and then assign me co-host. So I will be muting everybody. Okay, I go to participant. My name. You Your go to my name. Yes. And long, long press it, and then it will. The option will come to make me co-host. More in a in a more. Let me no, see. no. Or just press my name. Just press my long press on my name. Okay. And then the, there will be an option to make me co-host. In participants. In uh, participants list. In participant, I did participants. And, and look, look, look for my name. Sorry, let me go for, yeah, your name. It says. And then long press on my name. Long, long press on my name. Pressing your name. And then the option will come to make me co-host. Mm, I see more and mute. Uh, no, just press on my name. Oh, you did. can press on more also. Maybe there can come. Mm. Okay, I'm pressing on more. Uh, then you see. Stop the uh, make co make host. Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Host. Change host. No, co-host. Co co-host. Yeah. Yeah. What is a co-host? I don't. Let me see. In the you more. don't see there. <laughs> Uh, report, remove, put a waiting room, rename, make host. Make host or no? A co host. No. Uh, okay, you make me host and I'll make you co host. I know how to make co host. 
but uh, I'm recording here. Is it okay? Uh, so can you just press my name. Just press uh -huh. on my name, then the option to make, make me co-host would appear. Change. I'm doing a change. Abha is. Yeah, there. yeah, 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 yeah. Correct, correct. So uh, you you are still recording. No, no problem. Okay then. Okay. I'm back. I'm not used to all this technological thing. Okay. The first, you need to relax your upper part of the body. So start with the shoulder. You can put your hand here and put your elbows together. But you have to do it with breathing. Like you breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. And slowly rotate your shoulder. Breathe in and breathe out. So always do your breathing. Breathe in and breathe out. Also the opposite, breathe in and breathe out. It's a very nice way to relax your body and mind. Now, there's a lot of other techniques which you can use. Like when you do the pranayama, the ujjayi pranayama. When you do ujjayi pranayama, you constrict your larynx. And when the larynx is constricted, they, it creates the activation of your parasympathetic tone. Okay, so let's do the little couple of asana practice. We'll come to pranayama. We'll finish just 15 minutes before. Okay, the first asana to activate your agni, jathar agni was your vajrasana, huh? thunderbolt. If you can sit down in Vajrasana, and the best way to sit in a Vajrasana is that if you can sit down on your feet, and if you have a problem sitting here, initially what you can do, you can do a little bit of a roll, put underneath, but slowly and eventually you'll be able to sit down very comfortably. When you sit down comfortably, this is the one asana we always talk about. You do it, you can do it in your full stomach because this activates your vagal tone, parasympathetic tone. Remember, the sympathetic is called fright and flight response, and parasympathetic is called calm and digest. The whole digestion is parasympathetic. So when you get a parasympathetic digestion, your blood sugar gets digested, as simple as it is. Your blood sugar is digested, the sugar doesn't go higher. So next asana is very powerful asana for your diabetes to activate, remember, activation of your parasympathetic tone, which is a relaxation response. Activation of your jathar agni, hmm? agni dipana, then your spinal twist, massaging your pancreas to get the insulin up. Also, when you do the pranayama, you will understand in a pranayama practice that a, suppose a concept, a person, a person who is dying, what is the concept of death? We say we expire. When is the last breath came out? Hmm? Lung stops, then the heart stops. Then the brain stops, then all the cellular function stops. So think about if you improve your lung function, you improve your heart function, you improve your brain function, then improve your function in the pancreatic beta cell, pancreatic beta cell, which releases insulin. So able to do a, a good Vastrika Pranayama, able to do a Kapalbhati Pranayama, you are releasing insulin from your beta cells. So it's a nice way of connecting the whole able to exercise your lung will improve the function of your call it cellular healing. So the next asana, which is very powerful, is your mundukasana. Again, in your hand, use your adhi mudra. Take your thumb inside and close. Take both the hand close to your belly button. Breathe out first. In any yoga practice, always breathe out first. Empty your lungs. Take a deep breath in, slowly breathe out, suck your stomach in a little bit, and slowly come down. Now remember one thing, this is the difference in yoga practice for diabetes. 
Do not hold your breath. You keep coming down. You find the place which is comfortable. What is comfortable? No pain. If you have no pain, you come down. Then you listen to your sign for your effortless breathing. If your breathing catches, you back off. The pain, you back off. But if you have no pain and effortless breathing, you come all the way down and you stay here. How long? Between five to 10 effortless breathing. My forehead is touching the ground. I'm talking, I'm breathing, I'm completely effortless. So for the sake of time, if when you're home, you practice at least five to 10 breaths. People always ask me, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 90 seconds, one minute. But always follow your breath. When your breath becomes more and more effortless, you will see five breath, 10 breath is a wonderful practice. To quiet down your mind, sitting in this posture, another important asana is the Shashanka asana, rabbit pose. Why? It's a rabbit. Rabbit is running around, suddenly stops that. So we use it for, you know, from so you can a Shashanka asana, you can a balasana, Take the hold the hands high up, all the way down. Put your elbow in the ground, the head comes down. You are in a profound level of relaxation. Then when you get up, slowly get up. So now, when you are as a yoga teacher, when you are going to introduce that you need to do a Vajrasan, Mundukasan, and a Shashankasan for diabetes. You can explain. This is to your activate your jatharadni to digest your sugar, and this is to quiet down your mind so that your cortisol level. Remember that the the hormone of stress is cortisol. The cortisol level is going to come down. When cortisol level comes down, blood sugar comes down. As simple as it is. Okay. So massaging your pancreas. All the spinal twist, very important asan for diabetes is your vakrasan. Vakrasan is a wonderful spinal twist. Now, a person asked me one day, I cannot even sit in the ground. I said, sit in a chair. You sit in a chair. What you do, sit in a chair, hold your one hand, hold on the rail, slowly twist your body. That's good enough at the beginning. Remember, you need to start somewhere, somehow. So if you say, I'm going to go ahead and go to the full yogic asana, yoga pranayama, you won't be able to do it. At the beginning, I say you do one hour, 25 minutes of asanas, 20 minutes of pranayama, 10 minutes of meditation. It's a very good practice. But initially, you may not, initially Kapalbhati pranayama, you may do 30 seconds instead of one minute, it's good enough. Don't push yourself. Find it a completely effortless ease. So that, that we call it a dis-ease. D-I-S-E-A-S-E. Dis-ease is corrected with the effortless ease. So here I'm in a dandasana. I take my right, taking my right foot next to my left thigh. Very nice way of doing it. So that it's relaxation. You are relaxed. You can put your feet on the way down. Hand comes other side. Right hand goes to the back, left hand is uh, easily comes down, touches your knee. Now you'll see the effect of breathing. I'm breathing out first, take a deep breath in, and slowly turn my body, and you'll see at certain point, my breath will catch. This is an Anamaya Kosha to Pranamaya Kosha. If it, my breathing is not effortless, I will back off. I'll stay in the posture when my breathing is effortless and I'll stay here between five to 10 breaths. Five to 10 breaths is good enough. Then you slowly come back here. I practice every single day and I stay. I stay between five to 10 breaths. Just to show you a little better. So you do the opposite side. Always remember, you need to activate both sides of your brain. Very, very important yogic concept. So again, your knee will come down, your right, see right arm will go outside your left knee, left hand goes to the back, right hand comes down, that is very simple. 
beautiful asana. And then again, you turn yourself all the way to the back. It is squeezing your pancreas, secreting all the insulin, spinal twist. Ardha Matsyandranasana and your Gomukhasana. You can think of, see the sequence of asanas you are coming. So you don't have to memorize anything that what should I do if you understand the concept. So you're putting one foot here. So let me just show you only one side for the sake of time because clock is moving very fast. <laughs> so Ardhamatsayandrana asana. So my foot is here, this is my left knee, right foot is outside, my right knee, I can push it all the way out. My left arm goes here, right hand goes to the back, left hand touches my knee, touches my heel, the front of my foot. Beautiful posture. Breathe out first. Take a deep breath in, completely breathe out, and able to breathe. Do not hold your breathing. Do not do like I'm breathing in and breathing out. You are here, effortless breathing. It's a wonderful practice. Gomukhasan, cow face, you put one knee in the top of the other one. It's a very nice way to, to do it. See, Gomukhasa, the cow face, when you look at that, you know, the yogis look at the nature. This was the looks like a, a, a cow face. Now, in a, in, a, in a, this is very important. You need to see, you need to see your disc difference in both sides of it. The, when you do your hand in a Gomukhasa, you'll say one side is easier than the other side. That means your brain, one side of the brain is not properly functioning. When both sides would be equal, you will be disease free. So very, very simplest way to, let me show it to you. So here, <clears throat> my right knee, my right knee is in the top of my left knee. My right hand goes high up, my left hand is here. You can always stabilize your left elbow Put your left hand here, right hand will come down. So if you touch it, hook it, essentially, I can handshake each other. Very simple way. Go back, come down, do the opposite now. Now my left knee is in the top of my right knee. The left hand goes high up, right hand is here. I'm stabilizing my right hand, and now we look at the difference. My left hand will come down, I'm touching it, hooking it, and handshaking each other. It's a wonderful practice. So when you get into a practice like this, you will, you will understand. You will understand that the both side of your brain is functioning properly, and you are in a profound relaxation response. I'm not going to show you all the asanas, but I'm going to give you the concept so you can uh, practice it or you can teach because many of you, most of you are here, yoga teachers I can see and healthcare providers. So I'll be glad to answer any question when the time comes. But let's see, we will do some standing up asanas, laying down, face down, face up. So let me show you some face, face up. There is a concept of asana is called your igniting your jathar agni. Igniting your jathar agni will come laying down. The asana will be first will be the feet raising. Pada Uttanasana, Noka Asana, Pavan Mukta Asana, Markata Asana, Jathar Parivartanasana, Pada Mashtika Asana. Five asanas. These are very important for yogic practice. Then you do as the five asanas called your for Shankha Praksalan, Lohu Shankha Praksalan. Shankha is the metaphor of intestine, Praksalan is the cleansing. You know, you'll be able to sit down in a 
Malasana. Malasana is the most relaxing. Can you do Kale, your, your Jathar Parivartanasan, Kati Chakrasan, Uthira Tadasan, Tirjat Tadasan. So when you are able to sit down in a Malasan, take a look at that, how beautiful asana it is. You are sitting, your ankle is relaxed, knee joint is relaxed, hip is relaxed, back, your hand. So hand, when you separate your fingers, hand gets relaxed. When you extend your wrist, wrist gets relaxed. And if you put your one elbow inside, other elbow inside, and slowly bring close to you, close your eyes, breathe in and out. This is a profound relaxation and also it helps in proper elimination. Remember, we read all of your pelvic floor is relaxed. And one of the cause for all the lifestyle related disorder is called a constipation. Another very powerful yogic concept, able to get up without a support. It is called a sit, rise, test. When you're able to sit down, and able to get up. This is your controlling your whole body and mind. Next thing you do, you want to go against the grain of your habit. What is the grain of your habit? I'm comfortable separating my feet. So put your feet together. Remember your blood sugar is going to come down when you're able to balance your body and mind. When I want to balance, First thing happens in my hand. So if I fell down, my hand will fall down first. So if I take my hand function away and I will practice on my non-dominant foot, I'm right footed, I'll be practicing the left foot, able to stand on one foot and finally able to close your eyes. So let's do a practice if you want to see me or if you want to do it to me, but fair post to the back. First thing, Namaskar, put your hands here, Slowly and slowly, you put your hand as a prayer pose. When you come to a prayer pose, your whole chest opens up, your spine is straight and able to breathe properly. So see if I can stand on my left foot. I'm standing on my left foot, 10 seconds, 20 seconds, 40 seconds. Finally, I do it with my eyes closed. If I can stand with my eyes closed, initially it becomes almost impossible, but then your whole mind quiets down, your blood sugar will come down. So do it at home a little longer. I'm on the right foot. On my right foot. 10 seconds. 20 seconds, 40 seconds. My eyes are closed. I'm in a profound level of relaxation. So standing up, you have a lot of other asanas you can do. You can do a Surya Namaskar, you can do a Chandra Namaskar, you can do a Trikonashan, most of the asanas you know. But let me show you one asana which is very powerful for diabetes. If you can do it slowly and bring it up, it's called the Prasharita Uttal Asana. Wide angle, separated, hand touching your feet. So if you can just keep separating your feet, you will see you are so relaxed in the asana that you will be able to do even a Kapalbhati Pranayama, Unulom Pranayama, even in that asana. Remember, all the pranayamas are done when your body is relaxed. So when you're able to do, let me show you one thing, what I'm talking about, you will understand. So here, you can support your hand and slowly put your head down. And we've been doing it for so long, we can put our head all the way down to the ground. Feet goes all around and almost to the <coughs> sorry, width of my mat. Hand. And I'm relaxed enough that I can do it. It, it, Powerful even at the Valhati Pranaya. So it is a wonderful practice. As I said, a lot of asanas you can do standing up. All the 
all the Lakati chakras, and any spinal twist is going to massage your pancreas. Let me show you just a few asanas, which most of you know, I'm just going to give you by name. It's called Agni Deepanasana. When you get a face down, you can do your Bhujangasana, you can do a Salabhasana, Dhunurasana. They're also very good for diabetes, but this is to ignite Jathar Agni. So you lay down on the mat first, and remember one thing, when you lay down, always try to keep your chin below your head. If you need a support, you can always put a little folded blanket. Don't do like this, you know, this is called very sympathetic. Chin below your forehead. Very relaxed way. Another relaxation is called abdominal breathing. When you bring your breathing, like if you say baby, baby will breathe. When you raise your, when you breathe in, stomach wall will go high up. Breathe out, stomach will go in. Breathe in, breathe out. Hands on both sides, slowly raise your both the feet high up. Pada Uttanasana. You can go high up, put your hands high up, Lokasana. Also, you will need to know your belly button. You see, the belly button is in the center. Very important concept. Pavan Muktasana, put your feet slowly, touch your nose to the knee. Then the chin goes in the front, you relax enough. You can do side to side <laughs> movement. You can do front and back, very powerful tool. Pavan Muktasana. Setuban Sarvangasana, separate your feet, touch back of your heel, your whole body will slowly go hoya high up, and the body stays high up. You can put your one foot high up, drop it down. So when I do it, I stay for a little long, long time, between five to ten breaths, and I'm just showing it to you. So these are the asanas to activate your Jathara and Let's do a little advanced form of Matarasan or a Jathar Parivartanasan. You can do putting your knees on one side and looking your body other side, or you can raise both the feet high up. Slowly drop it down, touch both the feet to your hand, and look into your <coughs> left side. Very important asana. And do the same thing in the opposite side. And do it very slowly and gradually. For the mystic asana, you hold your feet, bring it up, touch it to your forehead. It ignites your jathar agni. You can do it the opposite side. Then you know from here you can do it. And there's samasana. And when you get up from the samasana, you turn on your one side, bend your knees, put your head under your in a folded hand, and slowly get up and sit down. You know? Sukhasana, Siddhasana, Padmasana. Remember one thing in a yoga therapy practice, you are practicing all the <coughs> asanas in exactly in a powerful relaxing state so for you every asana is a sabhasana so people ask me do i need to do a counter pose do i need to do a relaxing pose yes if you use yoga as an exercise see yoga, yoga is not an exercise exercise is a muscle contraction exercise is sympathetic raises your heart rate raises your blood pressure and when there's a sympathetic overdrive, the parasympathetic activation takes place. Yoga therapy is a purely relaxation response. Now, activation of your parasympathetic tone through the branches of the vagus nerve. I have a whole session. You can go ahead to go and take a look at my uh, YouTube videos. I think it's in April 26th, I may be wrong. 
The title is called Your Improving Cardiopulmonary Function. And the cardiopulmonary function is all through the activation of parasympathetic tone. So if you have it here, yeah, then, then do one thing. Let me together explain. When you can do a ujjayi pranayam, and you will see how powerful relaxation it is. Ujjayi pranayam, you slowly close your throat and try to breathe in without any tactics. Mm. It comes from the voice box called larynx. Larynx is supplied by the two nerves called superior and inferior laryngeal nerve. They carry the signal through the vagus nerve and it activates your parasympathetic tone. Now, if you see, the another one will be activated is your Udiyani band, the abdominal, abdominal lock. So in a Udiyani band, and you'll see Jalandhar band, and in a, in a root lock called Mula band, when you put all three together, it's called Maha band. Maha band is a wonderful relaxing response, activation of parasympathetic tone. So first, you breathe out first. Take a deep breath in, completely breathe out, suck your stomach in and hold. So all of you know how to do Kapalbhati Pranayama. So I'm not interested in showing you all these basic pranayamas. You know, Bastrika Pranayama is active inhalation, active exhalation. Kapalbhati Pranayama is active exhalation. So what do you do? Close your eyes. I do with all the hand mudras. This is called your Dhano Mudra, Gano Mudra. This is your Vayu Mudra, it controls your Vata. This is your Shunna Mudra, helps your hearing. Prithibi Mudra and a Varun Mudra. A lot of other mudras, the Shakti Mudra, Apana Mudra, Apana Vayu Mudra. But this Mudra, this is called a Prithibi Mudra. You do a Prithibi Mudra with a Kapalbhati Pranayama for diabetes, for diabetes obesity, because this balances your Kapha. This balances your Pitta, Vayu balances your Vata, and Prithibi Mudra balances your Kapha. So you will do a Prithibi Mudra, put it in your hand, Close your eyes, bring your awareness to the belly button, and very gently, one per second. So look, look, look at this, when you are doing it, now if you look at carefully, it's massaging all the internal organs. It's massaging your liver helps you control your sugar. Massaging your stomach helps in digestion. Massaging your pancreas helps releasing insulin. Massaging your small intestine. Massaging your large intestine. For the women, it massages your ovary, tubes, uterus. For the men, it massages your prostate. It also massages your lung, your heart, diaphragm. In a lung, it removes all the toxic substance. That's why it's called a kapal bhati. Kapal means forehead, bhati is a shiny. What does kapal bhati mean? Means your agni has come up. It's called tejas. Like tomorrow we'll do a practice, uh, not tomorrow, Saturday, called a yoga therapy for inner radiance. Inner radiance called tejas. So the tejas, looks like you are glowing, you are glowing around your face. And that is called your Kapal Bhati Pranayama. Agnisar Kriya is a very wonderful practice for your diabetes, if you can do, because remember it's massaging. So do the, your, the <clears throat> Udiyani Ban, then move your stomach. See, this is very relaxing, but the tight you will be able to do. When you do Kapalbhati Pranayama a little faster, 
but completely effortlessly. Remember, if you're huffing and puffing doing a pranayama, that pranayama is going to hurt you. The pranayama is not going to help. So again, breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Suck your stomach in and move. A wonderful practice and honestly I'm still breathing I'm talking let me show you a couple of very powerful you're igniting your relaxation response how do you do it before you finish the first if you do a ujjayi pranayam remember ujjayi pranayam is relaxing and you'll see I'm going to show it to you Ujjayi pranayam, since you are all yoga teacher, you'll understand. <clears throat> With Ujjayi pranayam, I will do a Udhyani band. When I'm doing the Ujjayi pranayam, When I'm doing Ujjayi Pranayam, which is very powerful activation of the parasympathetic nerve, parasympathetic tone, I'm doing your Udhyani band, abdominal lock. When I'm doing the abdominal lock, I'm also doing a chin lock, called a Jalandhar Bandha. In a Jalandhar Bandha, it activates the carotid sinus which is also activation of your parasympathetic tone. Then I'll end with your left nostril breathing, which is called Chandra Vedi Pranaya. See the alternate nostril breathing, left nostril breathing is your Chandra Nadi, right nostril breathing is Surya Nadi. So left nostril is coming, cooling, left nostril is parasympathetic, right nostril is sympathetic. So think about this practice. It's a wonderful practice if you can incorporate slowly in your diabetic management. Then you'll see when you come down with the alternate nostril breathing, you will do a little called meditative alternate nostril breathing. You will do alternate nostril breathing without closing your nostril. Okay, so let's first start with this Ujjayi Pranayam and we'll finish with the Unulom Vilom Pranayam which is meditative Unulong Vilong Pranayam. Your hands in a Adhi Mudra, put your thumb inside. Completely breathe out first. Take a deep breath in. Completely breathe out. Starts with Ujjayi Pranayam. <coughs> Sorry. When you get a cough, that means you are activating the Ujjayi Pranayam because cough comes from the legs. <coughs> Start again. Breathe out first. Deep breath in. Completely breathe out. with my eyes closed, it brings a profound relaxation body and mind. Ujjayi Pranayam with Udhyani Band, Jalandhar Band, 
and Chandravedi Pranaya. Your blood sugar is going to run away from you. The blood sugar is going to be scared to stay with you. Let's finish and we'll have about 15 more minutes for your question and answer with a meditative practice. But remember the meditation is Chitta Vritti Nira. People say, I want to do meditation. You don't want to do meditation. You prepare your physical body, prepare your breath, meditation will come to you. Breath is a connector between body and mind. So suppose what asana you need for meditation, sthiram sukham asana. Stillness, happiness in asana. Pranayama, effortless breathing, it will slowly take you to meditation. Meditation, chitta vritti goes away. So let's practice a normal alternate nostril breathing. I'll close my right nostril. I breathe out through my left nostril. I breathe in through my left nostril. Close my left nostril with the ring finger and little finger. Breathe out through my right nostril. Breathe in through the right nostril. Breathe out to the left nostril. Now let me show you how to bring the concentration and a balance. Your Vishnu Mudra, take your index finger and middle finger, put it in between your eyebrows and the third eye, close your eyes, bring your awareness in your third eye. Take your left hand, hold on to your right ear lobe. This is called your super brain yoga. It balances both sides of the brain. In this posture now, you do alternate nostril breathing. Breathe out through your left nostril. Breathe in through your left nostril. Close your left nostril. Breathe out through your right nostril. Breathe in through your right nostril. Breathe out through your left nostril. You practice as long as you're effortless. This is the technique at home. You do it a little longer and longer as long as you're effortless. Let's finish with the meditative alternate nostril breathing. Meditative alternate nostril breathing is you will bring your awareness to your body and mind that you will be able to do the alternate nostril breathing without closing your nostril. Like what happens, a practice of yoga is a union. It unites your body and mind. We have a gross body, subtle body, and causal body. Sthula sharir, shukha sharir, and karana sharir. So if my eyes are closed, I can touch my head, I can touch my nose, I can touch my left index finger, I touch my right great toe, touch my left little toe, and exactly that my part of the body. So quiet down your mind, touch your index finger and thumb, Ganu Mudra, Dhanu Mudra, put it over your knees, close your eyes, bring your awareness in the left nostril, breathe out through your left nostril, then breathe in through your left nostril, breathe out through your right nostril, Then breathe in through your right nostril. Breathe out through your left nostril. I can clearly see my breath is going through my left nostril. Breath is coming out through my right nostril. Now practice at home. Close your eyes. Quiet down your mind in silence. You do alternate nostril breathing without closing your nostril. You enter into a profound state of relaxation and meditation. When you finish the practice, you bring your hands in front of you, touch your little finger and thumb, separate your index finger, middle finger and ring finger. This is called a Padma Mudra. In a Padma Mudra, it connects your body, mind and spirit. It quiets down your body and mind. It brings your wellness. Slowly bring the Padma Mudra close to your heart. Heart is the site of your soul. When you do a Sharir Shuddhi, Sharir Shuddhi does not clean 
or does not remove the root cause of the disease. You have to do a manushuddhi, mind cleansing, and atma shuddhi. Sharir shuddhi, manushuddhi, atma shuddhi. Slowly bring your hands in front of your heart chakra, anahata chakra. Bow your hand down, it's a namaste. That means I honor the divinity within you, your divine, and finish it with a nice humming and cupping. You're all of this is a whole big practice. You know, this is such a powerful humming and cupping. These are all heat in your hand. The wearing glasses, remove your glasses, put your hand over your eyes, and then Next phase is just keep on slowly massaging, massaging your forehead, massaging your eyes, massaging all the face muscle. Go behind your ear, massage it behind your ear, massage in front of the ear, massage the tragus called in front, massage inside your ear canal. So this was all the auricular branch of vagus nerve. Bring it down, massage your neck, it's called carotid sinuses. Very powerful massage, massage your back of the neck and slowly come back, open your eyes. And we call it a, in Western concept, it's called a money back guarantee, huh? Karo yo, raho niro, huh? Thank you for your time. It's a wonderful uh, meeting all of you in uh, uh, Singapore. And you know me, you let me do the practice. I'll be practicing whole day. The yoga practice is 24 seven. I love 99% practice. So let's open it up for your audience. See how many, if they have, I, cannot, I cannot do and read. So if you can guys that read and you tell yeah, I can, me. I can read. Yeah, I can read. So see, if, if, if you have any questions, uh, there are two options. See, I, I can unmute you. You can raise your hands or you can write your questions in the chat section and I will read out the questions and Dr. Sarkar would, would be able to answer your questions. Thank you, Dr. Sarkar. It was a wonderful presentation. I'm sure everybody has uh, loved it, you know, as much as I loved it. But only thing so, what I really want all of you, all of you are such a long-term practitioner, take the concept. Huh? Massaging pancreas with a spinal twist, all the asanas, igniting jatharagni because body has to digest to sugar, sugar is high, and the sugar got raised with your cortisol, so cortisol is the hormone of your stress. So relaxation response, parasympathetic activation. Okay, tell me. If you any, have any questions? Questions? Anybody uh, wants to ask a question? You can unmute yourself and please ask one by one. Do not unmute everybody. Okay, uh, we have, have one. Uh, yeah, I have a question. Uh, so my question was like, um, uh, talking about Ujjayi Pranayam, uh, some people do it without the sound and some with, do with the sound. So like what is the difference and doing with the sound, does it like help in diabetes anyway? Yeah. So Ujjayi Pranayam, it primarily, it's a relaxation response. This is the thing people don't understand. People say I want to make the larynx tight. You know, the tightness will come. See, this is the muscle. There are two nerves, one nerve called a superior laryngeal nerve and inferior laryngeal nerve. There are two muscles, one is called cricothyroid muscle and called intrinsic. So first, when you slowly start closing this, your voice, the, we call it a voice box, you will hear a sound, which is like a, call your, we call it dirt feather breathing, like a seashore sound, both inhalation and exhalation, like this. <laughs> Slowly and slowly, when you bring the more and more relaxation, more and more activation of the parasympathetic tone, then you will be in a mostly in your inhalation like this. What it does, it has a powerful effect on your vagus nerve. You know, vagus nerve then sends a signal. The signal comes to your soft palate and the tongue. So more than diabetes also, you probably most of you know by now, the insomnia and a sleep apnea. Sleep apnea is the one which is a root cause for diabetes. Sleep apnea causes this phenomena called a metabolic syndrome. 
and sleep apnea, it gets corrected with the Ujjayi Pranayam. So answering your question is, yes, Ujjayi Pranayam, when you start doing a tightness, that the time you had a problem, you don't have any sound, or when you relax, this is the way it will happen. Or it all comes with the practice and primary relaxation. Thank you for the question. Thank you. Thank you. And does this help the thyroid also, thyroid problem? It's very much. You know, whole yogi concept is if you massage your organ, the organ gets better. So that's what you are massaging. You are doing spinal to massaging your pancreas. When you do a Kapalbhati Pranayam, you're massaging your lung, massaging all the organs. So look at what I'm doing. When I'm doing Ujjayi Pranayam, my thyroid gland is here. Literally massaging your thyroid gland. So again, in yogic tradition, you don't discriminate between hypothyroid and hyperthyroid. It is called imbalance of your thyroid function. It gets corrected with Ujjayi Pranayam. And for thyroid, you have a lot of other asanas. You have a ustrasan, you have a matsasan. Matsasan is a very powerful tool for your thyroid or sarvangasan. Yes, it helps your thyroid function. Pujayi Thank you so much. Thank you so much. It has been a wonderful, wonderful session. Thank Absolutely. You. Thank you for participating. I... We have another question from Radhika Mehta. Uh, Radhika, would you like to speak out your question? Uh, yeah, sure. Um, so, uh, thank you so much, Dr. Sarkar. It was a lovely session and very scientific. My question is, um, uh, we focused a lot on Kapal Bhati uh, for, uh, for several reasons, as you explained, in diabetes. Now, this age group of patients who have non-insulin dependent diabetes can have, uh, very likely have associated hypertension uh, as well. And they could have... Um, uh, they could have the hypertension which is in control or maybe not in control. Now, is there any precaution that we need to take in these patients who have both the diseases while we are doing these uh, uh, pranayams and these practices? Sure. Very good. Very, very important question. See, in yoga practice, we call it as art of transformation. What it transforms? It transforms a rogi. We call a rogi. Patient comes as a patient. Transforms into nirogi is a healthy, then becomes a yogi. People like us, you know, had open heart surgery 20 years back. I was a rogi. Now, I'm, a, I'm a more, than, more than a yogi now. So, you always think in your mind, the body gave you some signals. What is the first signal? Is a pain. Pain is called pay attention. Do not do anything which is going to cause pain. If you're doing a Kapalbhati Pranayama or you're doing an asana which creates pain, back off. Second, Annumaya Kosha to Pranumaya Kosha. That any imbalance you have in the physical body, that includes your high blood pressure, that includes your heart disease, that includes your glaucoma, in pressure in the eye, it includes any of your body's disease, is going to affect in your breath. So if you are able to do a Kapalbhati Pranayama very slowly, then you will be able to talk, able to breathe. You have an effortless breathing. It is not going to hurt your blood pressure. It is not going to hurt your heart disease. If you keep on doing it completely, say if you're doing it, then you say, I cannot talk, I cannot breathe. That is going to raise your blood pressure. It's going to raise even blood sugar. It is not going to even help your blood sugar. And believe me, I see a people all the time. I'm doing this Kapalbhati Pranayam, my blood sugar is still going high up. I'm doing my Kapalbhati Pranayam, blood pressure is going high up. So what is your answer will be? It will be too fast, too rapid, slow down. In fact, if you cannot do it a Kapalbhati Pranayam, sit down in a chair. Sit in a chair, keep your spine straight, eyes closed, do this Prithivi Mudra. Even if you do 30 seconds, it's good enough. Because my goal is five minutes, 10 minutes, but that is my target. 
I may reach, I may need even maybe three months, six months, one year to go over there. Or another person is different. Another person may go even two weeks go over there. So do not practice the way I am practicing or you are practicing. We are practicing, call it practice of the yogi. You practice as a rogi when the person comes in. Slow down, do very slow kapalbhati pranayam. Even your blood pressure will come down. Your blood sugar will also come down. Thank you for the question. Very wonderful question. Thank you so another much. Question, That's sorry. Uh, another question is from Anita Goinka. She wants to ask you whether all these asanas and pranayama are good for pregnant ladies who have gestational diabetes. Yes. Exactly same thing, the same concept you keep back of your mind. Okay. Say, for example, you know, say first trimester of pregnancy, first three months, that is the time that your pregnancy is at risk. And do not do anything to risk this pregnancy. So if you do pranayama, you sit down, do a unulom vilom pranayama. Hmm? Do a little brahmri pranayama. Do not try to do any kapalbhati pranayama. Do not try to do any heavy bastrika pranayama. Same thing with the asanas. If you do asana, sit down in a chair, nice for your gestational diabetes, do it very simple spinal twist. Like exactly, if you're pregnant, the one you will do, let me show it to you. Since I have a chair here. So we're all talking. This, remember, this thing looks very simple, but this is a wonderful practice. You sit in a chair, if you're just diabetes, you know, you put your one hand to the back, put your other hand here, breathe out first, take a deep breath in, and slowly do a spinal twist. The breathing and then come back. So for us, second trimester is getting more stable, and the third trimester, we really don't have any restrictions at all. And I can tell you, I have so many of my, I don't say students, you know, we share, you know. See, I'm not a teacher, I don't teach anything. You know what I teach? I teach my practice and my experience with you. I have so many of them, nine months pregnant, but they are actually, they are the yoga teacher. Actually, they are doing yoga for before their pregnancy. They can even do padahasta asan, touch the whole hand down to the ground. And the most interesting is all the yoga practitioners who are pregnant, my God, you know, they get a little pain, they go to the hospital, they lay down, they're doing their pranayama practice, relaxation practice. 12 o'clock at night, they have the baby. By six o'clock in the morning or by early, early morning, they're home. It is a wonderful, wonderful practice. So we really recommend a very gentle asana practice, pranayama practice for pregnancy, even prenatal. But we like a prenatal because people who are practicing asana before pregnancy, they handle the pregnancy so well. The pregnant, they handle the whole labor, you know, completely effortless and painless labor they have. Beautiful question. Any of you, how many of you are doing a, uh, uh, you know, the prenatal yogi or, you know, this is a separate branch now, prenatal yoga, even the postnatal yoga now, postnatal yoga is coming. Yes, there is no contraindication except the first trimester. First three months, you have to be extremely careful. So I don't see any more questions now. Anybody has any question? You can just unmute yourself and say before uh, uh, I hand over to Manoji for uh, uh, concluding the session. I have, I have only one last comment for all of you. Yes, yes, please. Yoga, please. Do with a smile in your face and with the effortless breathing. Don't do yoga like this. That is not going to help you. <laughs> and always try to close your, close your eyes. Do with Adhi Mudra. You know, every asana you do Adhi Mudra, you will see your smile will come back when you do that. Because you know, this is the baby. You became a baby. It's called Balo Mushti Mudra. Always keep a smile in your face, effortless breathing. And Every person 
es yogi en yogi. Karo yog, Rafa Nidog. Rafa, you can translate for you people who doesn't understand. Yeah, but in English, if you do yoga, you can stay with uh, disease free. That's, that's a new sutra. New, new yoga sutra. <laughs> <laughs> that's true. Thank you. Thank you for your time, you know. Manoj is here. Yeah, yeah. Manoj. Yes, yes, Dr. Sarkar. Bolliji. Such a wonderful session, so much full of uh, positive energy. And when we, whenever we see your session, we really get a lot of energy. And uh, you, you are the, uh, our role model for young people. Yeah, I'm, yeah, I'm, 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 I'm 21 now. I'm 39 and holding, but now I'm 21. <laughs> I absolutely agree. Absolutely agree. It has Dr. Sankar, you have transformed your energy into the very right direction. And uh, we had your, we remember your session in Singapore. Yes. Uh, you know, we were so happy in the whole hall, was full of energy. That's the, that's the real, real um, yoga uh, outcome. And, uh, and your aura is different, you know. We can feel your aura until Singapore from you. From U.S. to Singapore, you see, so that is the that that is the uh, outcome of yoga. So uh, um, a special thing with you is you are a doctor, hardcore doctor, and surgeon, and and how nicely the right brain and left brain, very nice combination, you know. Uh, normally, I have seen a lot of uh, you know modern doctor. They will not believe in yoga. They say, oh, you think this way, that way, so you know. But you, you, you can show everybody. And today, the need of hour. This, this is the need of hour mm -hmm. that everybody uh, they are they are looking towards yoga and Ayurveda. And this last three four months, we have seen the number has increased a very very big way. Now, if people are practicing yoga. They are learning about yoga. They are learning about Ayurveda and keeping themselves healthy, healthy through and, and prevent. Prevention is the message from yoga and Ayurveda. Okay, health is our birthright. And we are struggling for health. There's a, this is what happening today. Everybody talking about health, good food, you know, that is our birthright. <laughs> so, you know, so yoga should, uh, yoga and Ayurveda both actually together uh, should uh, help us and in for future, uh, people should uh, they should keep away from all these uh, problems. We call it psychosomatic disorder. That is almost our ninety percent diseases today. The lifestyle related, you know, just uh, uh, changing little bit lifestyle can uh, make us healthy. This is the message from you from your session, and uh, especially the diabetes. So much of research has been done already. And it's a proven fact, like type 2 diabetes, we can easily overcome, you know. And uh, I think somebody is suggesting, uh, suggesting that next session we can have for heart. You are a heart surgeon. So next session come from you with yoga for heart, how to keep our heart healthy. So we will look forward for your next session. Thank you so much from everybody, from all my students and Awa's student. Thank you, Awa, for telling everybody. And thanks, we are always together for these programs. We so we will thank you so much uh, to Dr. Sarkar. And we can conclude with Survey Bhavantu Sukhne all together. So, all together, you can do Survey Bhavantu Sukhne. <coughs> Sarve Bhavantu Sukhenaha Sarve Santu Niramaya Sarve Bhatrani Pashyantu Ma Kashe Dukha Bhagavi Om Shanti 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 Thank you very much. Thank you so much, Dr. Sarkar. We will see you soon. Now the world is very small. We can have you over and over again. Okay. I'm looking at all the pictures of Singapore again. 
So the yes, yes. memories of my life. It came in my Facebook memory as well that two okay. years back you were here. Okay. Actually, in my uh, 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 in the Facebook, also in the YouTube channel, I have the whole practices for a called Rogi, Nirogi, and a Yogi. When you're a patient, how to do a practice? Because uh, I don't know, I'm, I'm, I hope it's all ended. Uh, because the practice is is that uh, if you do a just for the symptoms, the Western medicine. I'm doing this for diabetes, this for hypertension. That is okay. You will get you will get relief. Your blood pressure will come down. Blood sugar come down. But those will be you know transient. It is not going to be permanent. We call it transformation. Transformation comes from your a daily practice incorporating is a is a or dinocharya daily routine as a lifestyle called a lifestyle medicine. When you incorporate, then you enjoy a quality like me, Abha Manoj, you know, we enjoy a quality of living. Huh? Hastho, you know, Hastho, the health, Shaw, Shaw, Sthi, Shaw is self. When you keep the self as a Sthi, Sthiram, Sukham, Asana, it's Hastho. Chitta, Nirod is a Hastho. Very important. Thank you. I can keep on talking. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you so much for everybody. Thanks a lot. For joining also. Thank you so much. Thanks, Abha. And thanks, Dr. Sikha. Thank you. Thanks, Manoji. Thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, everybody. I don't see it. I don't know all of you, but thank you again. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Thank you, Dr. Abha. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so thank much. You. It was a really, really uh, very wonderful session. And we are, we are looking forward for the, for the uh, yeah, another session in future. <laughs> yes. Very and soon. We are very proud very of you uh, because you are of Bangladesh. Yeah. We are proud of you. Tomorrow, <laughs> to, tomorrow, tomorrow I will have all four Bang, 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 Bangladesh people. Tomorrow I will have a Bangladesh yeah. uh, I, would, I would like to request that uh, the way here, the Zoom meeting, so when you will do the Bangla conversation in, so through Zoom, it will be more helpful. Tomorrow, Not only the Facebook live. Right, Aishapa. Tomorrow I'll be doing it in a Facebook like Oh, if you do Zoom, you can converse. Okay. okay. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So yeah, we would like yeah. to have the same the way you have done today. So for Bengali program, do a Zoom program. Good. Maybe from the next one. Tomorrow already. Yeah, sure. Okay. Okay. Yeah. We'll do a Zoom okay. and then we'll put the Zoom to Facebook Live. Yeah. Yes. Okay. Yes, sir. That would be better, sir. That's better. Okay. Okay, thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thank you so much. Nice to have you. Take care. Take care, everyone. Namaste, sir. Namaskar, everybody. Bye. Bye, everybody. Bye.